Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, it's been three years since I came back here. Um, I'll say that Jakarta has changed quite a fair bit. Uh, apparently now there's a train that takes me from the airport all the way to downtown Suleiman. That's nice. Um, I think we've done the, you know, we've introduced the panelists. Uh, thank you all of you all today for taking the time to sit down with us. So, uh, the topic we have discussed today, uh, we, you know, we can talk about security and we talk about how to secure the cloud. Now, the thing is, uh, cloud adoption in the Asia Pacific has broken, right? So, uh, it has not reached its full potential. Uh, we think it's an emerging core formation of, uh, you know, the new tech focus on most economies today. Um, a lot of this was brought on by the concept of COVID. COVID may really kind of accelerated this. Um, we live today in a job first world where you know, not only companies but organizations and employees rely on secure connectivity, access, and data to stay productive. You know, where most of uh, employees today work any place, anywhere, and your data essentially everywhere. Now, the thing is this. Through this panel session today, we have a good list of industry experts, both from the private sector, public sectors, new tech companies that has emerging, uh, traditional companies who are trying to embrace digital transformation. So what we hope to bring to you today is kind of insights as to what you know, people are doing in this world. Now, let me start off by asking this question. Now, cloud adoption is accelerating. We can all agree with that. Now, which one of these is driving the growth? Is it SAS, IAS, or PAS? Let's start with this one. Okay, uh, thanks, Doug. I think uh, when the large enterprise like uh, us, where typically we have the legacy infrastructure and the visualizations, and all the we embrace the cloud, we move towards the cloud, and then we start from the very basic things, is uh, like impossible services, but also the demand of the uh, uh, big data, for example, is uh, on the platform as well. So we start from IS to us, and I think the, the last will be the SAS, I think the third form of uh, the us. Things like Maybe, uh, uh, Mr. Ben, what do you think is a, you know, a new fintech company that's been you know, on the scenes for you know, a shorter period of time as compared to you know, a more established one? Yeah, I think uh, will be uh, uh, IAS yeah, because uh, the demand is in there, we have a lot of uh, demand, and it will be up for us to do the competition. Uh, for IIS, it's, it's very much easier, and also the second one will be the SAS because uh, it will also support us to do the implementation of uh, the And Mr. Bali, you have anything to add on to that? Yeah, actually, uh, when we talk about other things, I think the, the default mindset, default is highest. Like when, when we say cloud, they, they automatically take that it is moving server to the cloud. But I think SaaS is also having a good momentum right now. So it should be something that we look forward because actually in terms of the management itself, it is much easier. So I think this is something that we should strive for moving forward. However, what we need to pay attention to is more on the regulation aspect. Because when, when we talk about SaaS, it, there, there are many regulations like, for example, in Indonesia, uh, and many other countries. Uh, we cannot just move our data outside of the country, outside the boundary of the country. So it's something that we need to pay attention to if we want to move to the cloud, whether we will comply or not with the regulation. But yeah, I think SAS is something that uh, is starting to drive the growth of cloud nowadays. Now, on this note, right, uh, I think we can all agree that cloud adoption is accelerating, like it or not. It's going to be here to stay. Now, um, I'm sure a lot of us in this room today is very interested to know, you know what are some of the key areas of concern that organizations look, should look out for? Um, the first one, I think, again, uh, going to what I just said earlier, is the first one is about the regulation, the compliance aspect. When we want to move to the cloud, we should ask ourselves, can we do this? Is this uh, something that 
complete and use it complete. Uh, are we going to drag the regulation or not? So it's just it's not as simple as throwing something to the cloud. Because if we don't pay attention to the regulation, uh, there are consequences. Okay, if, if, if we just move something to the cloud and then we take the regulation, maybe they, we can get fined, we can be forced to roll back our change or migration, or an adverse case scenario, we can we can uh, get our license to operate standard by the regulator. So the, the first one is, of course, the compliance aspect. And what I just said earlier about SAS is also actually there are some, some there are many other services out there in the cloud, not only IS, PaaS, or SAS, that can help us with this regulation aspect. Like uh, recently, it is residency as a service if you've heard about it before. So, this is a new, uh, a new service in the cloud that we can go ahead and add in hand with SAS. So, if we want to move with SAS, and it, it doesn't comply, for example, because of the, the data protection law, then we can go as well with <laughs> residency as a service, uh, along with SAS. So, so, let me throw this question out there, right? You know, besides migrating to the cloud, which I think traditional companies like yourself who has legacy infrastructure in place, you know, what's one of the biggest challenges you see in terms of from a security perspective when I move infrastructure from on prem to cloud? And what do you think is you know, one of the most uh, important factors to pay attention to? Yeah, I think when we shift from the legacy, it's like as much of us about the mindset, right? Typically, we own the data in our infrastructures, and then we need to move it to the other providers, for examples. But I think when the public health providers is providing with good compliance, that they comply with almost security compliance to work, I think we, we should trust them. And then we, they are in big companies as well, right? And then after that, we need to consider about the security of the cloud because it's a quite different approach. For example, if we host it in our data center, maybe we need to protect them. Or like the secret infrastructures, like the access to the centers, but on the part, we need to focus, for example, like an identity. So that's a, that's a starting point. Uh, now, it's a guy, let me ask you this question, right? Um, um, the, you know, besides migrating of infrastructure and how uh, traditional security needs to kind of evolve, now, being a fin fintech company yourself, do you think that data is important? Yes, of course, it's very important. So, yeah, uh, if I may add here from part funded on the security that I think for the company itself at this moment, there are several technical things that need to be uh, uh, to on action here. Number one, for the access itself. Well, if we go into the cloud, we need to be very, very careful on access management itself because, you know, a lot of uh, companies at this moment, we are still hybrid, some of them. Uh, work from office and the work from home. So we need to be careful with the access management itself. We need to know uh, who is in our network. Uh, is it an uh, employee, member of the party, or partners, uh, merchants, and, and, and whoever it is? And then the second one is about the, about the uh, what's happening to my network. Right? So we need to know about the behavior of the application. Traffic, we need to know the traffic itself, and it should be encrypted. And the last one itself about the data itself, just like you said, is not. So the data is very important. So that's why I encourage uh, those of you who use cloud and to use uh, a version. So whatever happens, so let's say if something something bad going on, or something something goes wrong, uh, the data. Your, well, your data is still being protected, right? Because it's encrypted. So I think that is uh, some of the things that we need to be careful of and pay attention to. I think one of the biggest concerns that all of us in this room face, right, is that, you know, that if, uh, data is so accessible these days. Yeah. Right? You know, we have it at the palm of our hand. And a lot of times, that same phone that we use, it's not only accessing our uh, corporate information, but also our personal information, and it lives together. Right? Uh, I mean, have you ever accidentally posted a you know, sensitive document on LinkedIn and sent it out to WhatsApp and think that you might delete it, you will disappear? 
this is the set that we're working on. And we are uh, collaborating this with uh, development agencies. Uh, so we kind of like, okay, this is the context of the 2799. Uh, what's the root actually? So the end, uh, the end target that is is fully compliant with 2799, but there's a road map there because we cannot implement 2799 in just you know overnight we shut it down. It's yet to be uh, there's a road map in the planning. No, we know this road map. If you have not yet certified that, we follow this road map. So it's a necessary burden, but well, we cannot avoid that. Okay. So, um, let me start by going from you know uh, left to right, and I want to understand that you know with the situation and the environments that you guys have shared today, both from the private to the public sectors, from you know traditional companies that are trying to embrace new digital transformation to new companies who just jump ten years ahead of everybody else, right? Now I'm going to start with uh, Mr. Reed and ask you this question: Do you think companies and organizations are doing enough? When it comes to cloud security, yeah, I think uh, there's a lot of opportunity for the uh, large enterprise, for example, something from migrations from very basic like a lift and shift, and then we need to put a certain parameters on the cloud, and then we do things for the application security. So quite a lot of things to do. So uh, basically, we try to enter the cloud. We are moving toward most of the modernized environment, one of the Analysis of digital transformation. So we need to put on the more minimal way, more contained way, and also more secure way in the sense from my uh, outside. Well, Mr. Matt, same question. Well, I would say if you say enough, yeah, they won't be enough. They won't be enough. Security is always a yeah, challenge. It's, it's always a challenge. <laughs> so, yeah, there will be, there will be, <laughs> when you say something, or maybe when someone says it's enough, then yeah, maybe there will be no more security professionals again. So there will be no more security stuff again. But anyway, yeah, I would say uh, it won't be enough. So the the attack factor is keep evolving. Uh, the, the, the trend now is the trend is keep evolving. Uh, the hackers to sleep, and also the one that we need to protect is uh, it always changing. It keeps away from for nice. So that's why we need to be always being up and active and also proactive now. So I think the security within five or seven years ago, uh, we just we just need to do the monitoring and also we need to respond and we need to we need to do a proper incident response. But uh, right now it's only working on it to be proactively. We need to proactively uh, to find ourselves uh, where are we now? And then we need to check uh, against also with the market, uh, with the with the framework at this moment. Where are we and uh, where uh, what, where are the areas that we need to fix? I, 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 I think you hit the nail on the head. There's a lot of people in this room, including myself, I asked this question: Where are we right now? Yeah. You see, the last two or three years of COVID, the clock has always been there. Right, but the last three years kind of accelerated it. It's like stop working from office, go work from home. Now companies you know, are starting to figure out. You know, like three years ago, how do I let a bunch of people work from home? Basically, people are forced to use the cloud, so they accelerated everything in the last three years. So the question I think for most of us in this room is: It's not how to secure. Is where do I secure it when the cloud is everywhere? Right? You know, uh, traditionally we build security based on firewalls, or what we call security, you know, uh, uh, defense plan. Right? Now the problem is that the, you know, the, the gates and the doors and the fence were well, meant to protect something inside. Today, everything and every user is beyond it. Right? Again, uh, Mr. Bali, same question. Uh, before that, I think uh, I, would, I would like to appreciate to Papa and the Ministry of Health, actually. It is quite reassuring, very reassuring, actually, as a citizen, that we have that actually uh, they have done a lot uh, to secure our data as, as a citizen. So that is very, very good. Knowing that they are doing all the trouble 
to get to define it's not only by the tech trying to get to define it, but what we said the tech is trying to get to it too, so it's, it's actually uh, reassuring for us, right? So yeah, this is very good work. But it's also nice to know, right? You know, uh, I don't read back until after three years. You know, three years when I walk through the head you know, I, I can't imagine, you know, doing this in Singapore when you have five million people, this is, right? Doing what you guys are doing with 200, almost 300 million people, it's like, how do you even know where to start? Yeah. Actually, I think it's, our app is doing really well compared to other countries because last night when uh, another country actually do really look is doing really well from my experience. So it's it's doing well that we can do this. Okay, I guess. Uh is uh is about the same question. When now from a civil service public sector perspective, when do you think companies, organizations, are person? Do you think companies and organizations are doing enough when it comes in terms of cyber security, data security? Uh, this is a good question, So, uh, I want to come to because I, I work with the cyber security manager. Sometimes companies uh, have this mentality of let's deliver a team of security data. So, security becomes an on. And that means security was not built in from the get go, and then yeah, you will find yourself on a real business one. Uh, I am of the mindset that security should be not day zero. So even before we start planning the business plan and then the architecture and so on, uh, should be the first question: How do we prevent security? Uh, and honestly, uh, if I see uh, the private sector and also public sector, okay. Uh, that mindset is not yet uh, early in the uh, So, one of the reasons why in ISO 2001, uh, one of the key control is security awareness. So, everyone is looking at security, it's not just us in the cybersecurity division, no. it's actually uh, the provider for all of us. And that means not only the security guys, not only the infrastructure guys, not only the developers, but also the users. Because security is like a chain. It's only as long as you need to be So, from uh, my point of view, everyone really should kind of like the, maybe the buzzword is shift back. So, do not, do not just, uh, you know, kind of pile up the security products on the security division, but uh, something from the developers, they need really to, to start, okay, is my code secure? Check, oh, it's my goods are secure. And then I uh, did this before it had this time. Uh, and actually, it's not just on the part of the sector, but also on the other sector, like my experience. The shift back and currently is just not something for the game. Uh, in the Minister of Health, we are trying, uh, we are pushing up the implement uh, shift back so that uh, code does not get blocked in my mind. Everyone has to create a secure code. Uh, get to. So that whenever we uh, pull up with this, usually something new that we haven't uh, foreseen before. You know, there's no CD, there's no tech out there, totally uh, destroyed. We are trying to see that. Actually, uh, 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 I agree with Mr. Van here because what is important right now is the mindset shift because people do not really take security by people seriously, at least from, from, at least from my experience. Because I still find cases like when migrate their server from home time to the cloud, they still have the mindset of delivery. So project line like when when I should uh, deliver. So I uh, uh, this specific date that I need to deliver. So we we take security later. The most important thing is to deliver the project. So this is something that we need to consider. Like in, in some cases, I still find uh, servers migrate to the cloud. But they, they tend to forget that usually they have their server on time, which is in the internal network. But now they do it is in the internet only. Now, now the servers are public facing, and they tend to forget to post the post, for example. So it is accessible through the whole internet. So this is a, 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 a mindset shift that we pay attention to uh, about the security. Like.
Do you think this is more mindset or do you think this is more awareness? Both of them, I think. Both? Both of them. What do you think? I think both of them. But the first of all is the mindset, right? Because, like, uh, uh, I always say that uh, security is uh, should be secure for you all. And then, how the last work is like, when zero trust, second trust in your and then we just give the access to the one that we need in the database, and, right? So it's a mindset that they're always Yeah, but let's take the companies aside, right? And let's imagine, I want a new iPhone, and I've never been an iPhone user before. Right? The first thing I do is, as I turn on the iPhone, it says sign up for an iTalk account, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> Without thinking twice that by signing up for an iTalk account, I just move some, if not all, my data to the cloud without even me knowing about it. Right? So, is it awareness, enablement, acceptance? Yeah, I would say, yeah, number one, because of the, the awareness is very low. Some of the users or maybe some of the youngsters are little. They didn't know, they just know that, okay, I need to submit this. If I want to use iPhone, then I need to submit this. But they didn't realize about the risk. And they don't know uh, how it works behind it. Okay, so that's why, yeah, I would say, uh, Mindset and also when uh, definitely, uh, but in most of the cases, we don't have any choice. So the customers itself feels like, okay, we don't have any choice, so I just need to sign up, or otherwise I cannot use my iPhone. The question now is, whose responsibility is that now? Is it to organization or to the subscribers signing up? Right? They're like, you know, you take my example, and I'm like, all new iPhone, I sign up for my iPhone. Is it Apple's responsibility to protect my data, or is it my responsibility to make sure what you know, what kind of data I'm transferring from the cloud? Yeah, I would say it will be uh, everybody's responsibility. Yeah, we need to be uh, working together with the regulatory itself and also organizations, also need to secure uh, their customers' data because it is this not trust. Uh, if if the customers it's flat itself feels insecure. So the customers will go away and look for another competitor. Uh, that's important. Or uh, otherwise, yeah, yeah, it will be uh, will be left behind. Yeah. And this is this also become a, yeah, when you say uh, burden yeah, to the security itself now, I'd say uh, now, for the security profession, we need to maintain uh, two environments. Yeah. Just like you said, uh, for the uh, number one is like C environment, and number two, uh, some of the organization already moved into the cloud. So, the security professional need to maintain uh, two environments in a row, two security control in a row, which is uh, becomes more effort and also more costly to the organization itself. Uh, that thing is sometimes we don't realize, uh, yeah, we need to secure both. Now, uh, I'm going to wrap this up by saying that um, if you all want to ask everybody on this panel today, what is your prediction of you know, what the future holds for us? You know, whether is it coming for, you know, are we, is the fun here to say, you know, are we going to secure it? Is actually what is your opinion on this? Yeah, I think uh, the biggest driver is uh, like, for example, is the COVID nineteen. Everybody goes to cloud, and then also the threat is also increasing yeah? because uh, now I think every tech every current organization is now aware that people put the data in the cloud, and then the people is now accessing the data from everywhere, from all mobile devices, from the laptop, from home, from office. So I think the threat will be increasing as well as the the cloud is increasing as well. Yes, uh, man. Same question. What do you think the future holds for all of us in this room? Well, I think the future will be. Yeah, I would say it will be cloud uh, definitely. Uh, and uh, we as a security professionals, yeah, we need also to 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 be more proactively uh, put uh, more security controls and also awareness. Uh, to prepare ourselves for our organizations uh, because yeah, I think the legacy environments like on prem will be uh, yeah, in the long run it will be uh, 
<laughs> Do you imagine a world where there is a hundred percent cloud uh, or a hundred percent, you know, or will people just move back to on prem or it's going to be like a mixture of both? I would say maybe 80 20. 80 on prem or 80 on prem? 80 80. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a different time, different company. For example, like maybe you know, another company, maybe they will raise a lot of money to take out the riders. But uh, for example, maybe for the government, I'm not sure about the purchase, but it really depends on the risk of JDS. Okay, moving on. Mr. Bali, same question. Where do you think the future goes for all of us? Thank you. I have a very good question. How do you think the future, in my opinion, because more and more Companies really is not real. They have a project of any day. Well, it's the first thing that we come to mind. Because it is much easier. It is scalable. Okay? Uh, well, it's much more scalable than to try to set up the list. So I believe it is uh, something that will stay and will actually grow more and more. Uh, it will be the new standard like, in the future. But uh, what, what we need to understand is. Security, when we talk about security, well, it is everyone's responsibility. It's not only the company's responsibility, not only security. Uh, people's responsibility is everyone's responsibility. So that's why, again, I want to discuss uh, down about the importance of security by people when we implement and when we set up to our in the future. Okay, uh, just before, uh, to wrap up, just before we go into a short QA session. Uh, same question, Mr. Michael. What do you think the future holds for all of us? Uh, I'd say it may be a hybrid situation. Because just for instance, we don't try to get to maintain your own security, security there, and then you have to make sure of the physical security. Lots of people, okay, I can't fall for that. Uh, everyone can go in and out of the social room, which is kind of like. Okay, you're protecting it from the digital side, but you are from the physical side. But something you from getting inside, and you can all back and take it out. You know, it's like that. So, uh, implementing on prem has its own challenges, which does not exist in the cloud. Implementing in the cloud has their own challenges. One, one key thing is maybe we have to pass someone else because we are having our uh, system on someone else's computer. So, it will be always a trade off depending on the needs. Uh, whether you have your own security team, which does not cover only like my wall and network protection, but also physical, fingerprint, raise and uh, dual power supply, and so on, which is not that bad, but something you could But you, so, do you actually need to be in the or do you actually need to be in the services? It's kind of like you know, being on you, the services being offered, so. I say the future will be always be good because uh, there is no one size fits all. Like these are the clothes, you can buy a clothes and there is not only one size fits all, but there is also always one size fits no one. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to kind of like always come to pay off and uh, figure out for the next three years, three years, whether I'm going to stay in the car or whether I'm going to go back on premises or whether I'm going to go back on premises. With the cloud, or will we grow and the data science and my needs in the next three years? Or we will say on practice, so it's always uh, do it. But never, never lock yourself in just one situation. You have to be uh, always thinking about shifting. I think that's the uh, wise mindset that I have to go Thank you. So let me wrap this up. Uh, I think we have about five or ten minutes um, where you know, people realize on the audience. And ask our parents, industry experts, questions, you know, early questions you have on whatever you want to ask. So, uh, the only thing I would like to remind you is please do not ask sensitive questions uh, against any one of our organizations. We are not going to share trade secrets, nor do we do questions that are politically uh, appropriate. Right? You know, uh, we, uh, we want to avoid any unnecessary. Situations. Yes. Uh, can someone get it on mic? Please.
Uh, while we wait for uh, uh, organizers to get their bike, I think ultimately we can all agree, right? In the world we're going to move into is just going to be a hybrid world where there will be some form of on track that just can't move to the cloud. You know, quite a fair bit of which will move to the cloud. Uh, I think in this world we live in, uh, to summarize, you know, what our panels of experts have been said today is essentially all around access data. How do you secure access? How do you secure who is connecting? How do you ensure that you know, the data that you are sharing out of this hybrid infrastructure is going to be safe and shared to the appropriate people? Has he gotten a mic yet? When you do ask a question, please uh, let us know who do you want to address it to so that uh, the relevant parties can respond. data sharing 
it is like uh, all in one services. Uh, again, yeah, because it is cloud, it is very fast uh, for you to implement, and the cost itself is quite low, yeah, I would say, compared with the legacy environment. So, from there, also, it will help you to uh, speed up the implementation to the market. So, uh, you the only things that you need is you need to choose uh, uh, a good product which is already have uh, a lot of a lot of features uh, full stack on it. So by doing so, yeah, you can you can provide uh, you can you can protect from your perimeter and also your access uh, access control and also you can also protect uh, your 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 servers uh, all at once. Uh, I think uh, in in, in, in industry now, uh, they already provide uh, quite complete uh, features for that. So, um, I agree with what he says. Um, I think one of the things that, you know, when we take a very traditional security perspective, right, you know, we think of firewalls, IPSs, like basically anything that's on the perimeter. Now, the thing we always fail to protect is that the data link, the data that's being consumed. You know, uh, uh, you need to understand, or you need to identify where your data repository is. You know, access, as we mentioned, by a lot of analysts, a lot of times, who can access it? Right? Um, I think what is also very important is what can access it. Is what devices, whether it is managed, unmanaged, what is the posture of the device? Right? Is that does the device that is consuming this data is it clean? Does it contain ground keys? Does it have an APT or ransomware is associated with it? Right? And if it is, if, if it does, do you allow it to consume the data? Because if it has a ransomware or spyware, right, when it consumes your data, even though the user is consuming the data, has access to it, there is a chance that that spyware might still be able to exfiltrate the data. Right? So data is important. Uh, I think one of the panelists I can't remember mentioned about is encryption. Well, encryption is fantastic. Uh, I think one of the new things that we should, uh, companies, organizations should also look at is digital rights management. I mean, this one particular document, when I encrypt it, who is allowed to view it? Right? You know, how many times we have been guilty of accidentally forwarding out an email to somebody else that was not intended to be on the mailing list? Right? While encryption will work, digital rights management will ensure that that person that it was not intended for will not get access to the content. So, access, data, all you know, put together and cost the carry. So, uh, I hope you answered your questions. Uh, we will be hanging around, so if anyone wants a more private one-to-one -one kind of thing, you know, feel free to reach out to us. And let me hand this back to you. All right, please give Mr. Delta a list of eight great panelists a big round of applause, everyone.